This is A game. Fast acting, long lasting, with no side effects. Hey, all my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel, where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I am, of course, your host, femininity coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So I'm going to let you watch three videos. I'm going to try to they're pretty short. Uh, one of them is one minute. I'm not even going to let you watch the whole thing. Uh, but I just want to I just want to show you something and then we're going to talk about it. I'll be back with my perspective. Let me just let me just show something to you. What are your thoughts? Man, I'm not all you know. another look. Let's take another look at something else. We're not done. Where did the hat come from? <laughs> okay, hey guys, I'm about to show you the outfit of the day. Where did that come from? <laughs> did you? One more. Y'all remember this? I know you remember this one. This one's an oldie but a goodie. I know you remember this one. That's enough of it. So is this how you deal with, with racism face to face? Huh, black women? Where's all that aggression at when Becky and Brad is putting you in your place? I want to know where the smoke is at when they're in front of you talking crazy. The one, the first one that I showed you, I'm not a, I'm not a monkey man, ma'am. So you still giving respect to an old Karen that's sitting around here talking to you about how you are a monkey and how your hair look crazy and how black people taking over everything, but you ain't had no smoke for her, none whatsoever. You didn't cuss her out. You didn't fight her. You didn't raise your voice. You didn't change the tone. You didn't move your seat. You didn't do anything that old karen sat there and told you just exactly what she thought about you and you didn't have nothing to say you had nothing to say to her where's all of that smoke this is how you behave when you're in front of your masters and your master's wife then the other one i don't care if it was supposed to be some type of joke i don't care that's what she was either trying to play it off as or whatever like it was supposed to be some type of skit, letting that boy smack her in the face. I have seen supposed skits where black men and they little girlfriend prank they little girlfriend and they don't have nothing to do with hitting her or nothing like that. And she goes smooth off. 
okay? Anywhere from cussing him out to smacking him in his face for saying or doing some stuff that she called herself, you weren't supposed to do to her plank or not. See y'all, gynocrats and hyenas got a lot of smoke. Y'all got a lot of smoke for black people, but you ain't got no smoke for, for Brad and Becky. You ain't got no smoke for Master and his wife. Do you bed wench? Y'all don't have none. Y'all can always find the high road. You can always find how to de-escalate a situation. You can always find, you know what I'm saying? Just this calm that you, and this civilization and this, this professionalism. You can always find just this inner peace that you're willing to just display on how you're the better person. But you don't do that same thing with black people at all. At all. Where's strong and independent at? You y'all are a bunch of cowards in front of white people. Let's just call it a spade a spade. See, y'all are bullies. Y'all are bullies against black people because you a jump a black man. You a jump a black woman. Other black people can't even softly tell you nothing. This is why I don't softball because they can't even softly tell you anything about what's going on. But when you get in front of Becky and Brad, they can do whatever to you and you cool with it. You know what I'm saying? You all of a sudden you can find the peace of the Lord. And you don't have to say nothing back. You know, they just ignorant. Now, you know, all of these different excuses as to why they can do what they do to you and say what they say to you and get away with it. Something to excuse your cowardice in front of them. Because I've seen you drag other black women for filth. I've seen you bust another black woman in her head. For so much as the slight disrespect. You don't take, according to you, you don't take no disrespect from nobody. Right? You don't take no disrespect from no black men. You ready to jump him, ready to get him killed, ready to set him up. Ready to have somebody else jump them. Ready to call the police, have them deal with them. For him, for the mere mention of him doing anything or saying anything that you don't like or arguing with you too long or quote unquote disrespecting you. You willing to drag a black woman, your neighbor, because she might have said something. She might have did something you didn't like. You ready to kill a man, a black man, because you think he's cheating on you. You think. You ready to drag a black woman if you think she texting or talking to your man. You think. Not confirm. You think. If she say something to you in a store you don't like. We've all seen the videos. You ready to tell her head off. You will beat your kids half to death. For them doing what? Disrespecting you. Any form of disrespect. So let you tell it. You don't take no disrespect. But I find it real odd you take it from white people. And I'm the mammy? Right. I ain't never took no disrespect like that. Ever. Nobody has ever come to me with that type of disrespect. But they come to you with it. Because they know you're going to kiss butt. You're not going to say anything. You're going to take the high road. You will come confront without no compunction, without no reservation, another black person. Here I am trying to tell you how you got into this situation, where things went left and how we can get out. Sister Shahrazad Ali did the same thing. 30 years ago, she wrote books. She went on tour. She went on interviews trying to tell black women about what was going on with them. That was 30 years ago. You, you have not course corrected yet. Y'all still got smoke for Sister Shahrazad Ali. Y'all still be having smoke for her. You come to my comment section. You have smoke for me. You got something to say.
All you got to do is turn the channel if you don't really like what I'm saying. But when Becky and Brad get in front of your face, all of a sudden, that mouth shut. Now you don't know what to say. Now you addressing her as ma'am. Now you letting white boys smack you in the face for a joke. Now you letting white women spit on you. Gave that old woman a whole bunch of excuses. Well, you know, she got dementia and you know, she got this and she got that. That's why she spit. She got dementia so much, but she didn't forget how she hated Negroes. She didn't forget how she hated you. That she didn't forget. She remembered how to disrespect a black person. And you let her do it. Stood there and finished washing dishes. You didn't even have the self-respect to stop working how you was doing. Call the agency that you came from and tell them, listen, I can't take care of her because I'm being spit on and I just can't tolerate that. So what I'm going to do, please have someone else to come and take care of this client. That's all you would have had to do. You didn't even do that. You stood there and tried to finish doing your job and giving her the benefit of the doubt of her being elderly and maybe, and you know, losing her faculties, but she ain't lose them that much. She knew to walk around that house the best she could and harass you best she could. And you fell right in line with what you were supposed to do in that situation, which was to bow down to Massa and Massa's woman, Massa's real woman. You know your place when you get in front of them. That's I find that so odd. You 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 would rather you be ready to actually literally kill other black people for quote unquote hurting you, for doing something to you. You will abuse your kids. You will abuse your man. You will try to beat other black women up or verbally tear them down. You will try to do that because they quote unquote disrespecting you. But when white people come around, all of a sudden you get a whole lot of act right. Now you know how to deescalate issues. Now you know how to calm everybody down. Now you know how to, you know what I'm saying, just ignore it and just don't give it no energy. Now all of a sudden you know all of these different various tactics to handle adversity and confrontation that don't have nothing to do with you cussing somebody out fighting somebody or in some other way harming them because they disrespected you. You don't you don't even take other black people speaking quote unquote harshly to you. Again, here I am trying to give you the game. I'm trying to let you know what it is that we're doing wrong as black women and how it gets corrected. And you got smoke. You got smoke for every black woman that has ever stood up to tell you anything. You got smoke for every black man that has ever stood up to tell you gynocrats anything about anything that you were doing, any adverse effect and behavior that you was having on the community. You don't want to hear it. You want to cancel people. You want to shut people up. You want to shut people down. If you physically in front of one of us, you want to try to lay hands. But when you get in front of your real masters, you know, you know, a slave's place. I find that real interesting. A mammy always know a place, don't she? The bear wench always knows where she belongs. She knows she got to shut her mouth and put her head down. Doesn't she? You ain't really white people when you get around white people. You only white people when you around black people. And that's how we know you ain't nothing but a bully. Because when the big bully come around to check you, you get checked. Don't you? You fall in line quick. A bunch of cowards. The lot of you. That's why I'm telling other good black women, don't be scared of the gynocracy. They a bunch of cowards. They a bunch of clowns. They a bunch of paper tigers. Don't let no gyno crack 
try to intimidate you to not be a good woman, try to call you names, try to ridicule you. Don't be, don't, don't even be intimidated by them. And if they don't want to talk to you, good. It'll be the best thing happen to you in your life for them to leave you alone. So sound off in the comment section for me. I want to hear your thoughts on this situation. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I am your host, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production and I'll catch you guys on the next one.